Good day, folks. It's Greg Judy, Green Pastures Farm. Today we just moved the bull mob. Some of them, there's still some up behind us, but uh, you see the, the plant that they're eating here. They went right to it. It's a giant ragweed. Tremendous forage. Um, a lot of people curse giant ragweed because, you know, oh, it's a weed, it's a weed. It's like, no, it's probably the best forage in your pasture. And what they do is they go out there and they brush hog it down. You could have ran it through an animal. Probably got, you know, a couple pounds gain a day off of this stuff. I have a good friend in uh, Houston that had a thousand acres and I think about 500 of the giant ragweed and it got up to eight feet tall and uh, he had a bunch of heifers in there they just disappeared couldn't find them and they were living under that eight foot giant ragweed he finally got them out there after a couple weeks and he said they were so fat they could hardly walk and he's like you know I think I need to go in there and combine that stuff but I'm not going to tell anybody I did it <laughs> so folks giant ragweed is unbelievably palatable uh, they'll eat it 20 times before they will common ragweed. Now, we just took them off a pasture behind us, and I'm going to show you what they did to it. There's no leaves left on it. See, they're going to be on here for 24 hours. Now, here's another one up here, giant foxtail. Looks like we've got a couple of bellying up to the bar on that. On the giant foxtail, too. You see, they're just casually coming up around here. They're not really that hungry. That one's getting some uh, Korean Lespedeza right there. Folks, we caught eight and three eight eight three eight and three eighths inch of rain over eleven days, and it turned our farms into a beautiful mecca of green, which was all brown uh, eleven to twelve days ago. We're pretty happy about that. Not, not pretty happy. We're real happy about it. Now here is one of the areas we cut all the uh, autumn mollies. And I don't care how well you do, you're always going to miss one. Here's one we miss painting right there. We didn't paint that one. And you can tell it. It came back with a vengeance. You got to get those things painted, or you're just wasting your time painting them or cutting them. Might as well not even cut them because they're just going to come right back. They're going to come back ten times worse. So that was one. That was one plant, and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven sprouts came up off that one stump. So now you got seven of them. You got to cut instead of one. Boy, two seventy-five. You're going to make a nice young bull. He just now a little over a year old. He is going to be a beaut. We took our six best out of here. So he's not even one of our best. The six best are with the cows. And uh, those are, all the bulls will be coming out uh, the end of August. So we put them in the cow herd for 60 days this year. There was one autumn molly that survived yesterday, we noticed in the paddock. There was another one we didn't paint. And this morning, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Them bulls absolutely massacred it. Look, look what they're doing to that giant fox tail. And I know it's windy out here, and no, I don't have a muffler. <laughs> Just suck it up, take the noise, and look at the pictures of the video. I don't have any foam with me. I'd stick a piece of foam over it, but I don't. They're going after that stuff right there. Giant foxtail. That stuff's seven foot tall. And there wasn't any of that there before the rain. That stuff came up in 11 days and made that grow. And they're going after it. They'll have every single plant of that eight by the night. There's a mixture in here, folks. There's uh, stick tight, which is the, some people call it wild soybean. 
got this right here. Of course, there's fescue, there's a goldenrod, a little bit of buck brush in here. That, that booger right there. Um, ironweed. I noticed yesterday some of the ironweed uh, had leaves missing on it. So these cows are getting a really good smorgasbord of a whole different a whole, a whole group of different species. I see that one's eating some of that stick tight. You just gotta do a bite of that. But the, the primary plant they're after is a giant ragweed. They're gonna get it. And if they don't, the, the next bowl to them will. And it's funny, um, a lot of this ragweed is only like maybe two feet high. Um, it seems like when it gets up to six feet, it'll get to eight if you let it. Um, five to six feet, they absolutely just love it. Um, and if you put your hand on these leaves, folks, they're, they're coarse. I mean, they're just really rough. It almost feels like you're grabbing a cow tongue. That's how rough that leaf is. But man, they, they just love eating these things. And uh, they, eat, they eat the whole, you know, they just eat it. They get all the leaves off of it. And uh, they'll eat the stalk up here at the top. They won't eat the stalk down at the bottom. It gets kind of woody. But you can see what they're doing right away. They're, they're just taking the tops. They're just clipping the tips. But they're going to be in here 24 hours. So they, they'll come back and they'll clean up all these little side leaves all the way down as far as they can reach. So these are catching some serious solar energy. I mean, look at that solar panel. Okay, it's catching a lot more energy than this fescue is right here. So we're winter stockpile mode right now. We're growing fescue and we're leaving a ton behind us. A ton behind us, so it's gonna grow back nicely. Um, we actually sorted out two of our remaining uh, macho bulls and uh, we're bringing those in to cattle visions this morning we are so fortunate to have cattle visions um, they are a ai service they uh, collect semen on bulls and they freeze it for you in straws and then we sell it on our website and they also put our bulls on their listing so you can buy semen from green pastures farm through cattle visions website uh, we have a web page has semen sales so the folks that have you know four or five cows uh, you can breed to one of our best bulls for thirty dollars you know 25 30 bucks for the semen straw and of course you have to have an ai technician come out and breed your cow or cows but you know it doesn't make sense to own a high priced bull when you've only got you know four or five cows uh, but yet you can still breed to the best you don't have to own a, you know, eight to say fifteen thousand dollar bull, but you can still breed to them. So we got two of our best up in the crowd right now, and uh, we're going to be pulling semen on them today, and that will be available for anybody that wants to breed fall, because it takes a while to get it all put in the straws, and then they, I don't know what all they do to it, but <laughs> they know what they're doing. Cattle visions. Yep, and you check them out. I don't know how many bowls they've got frozen in. in uh, they keep that stuff under liquid nitrogen in straws. I'll bet you they've got over a thousand sires in there. Maybe more. Maybe 5,000. I don't know. Um, a lot of it is... Uh, been in, you know, they've got straws that go way back. I'm not sure what the oldest semen they have in there. But as long as you keep it under liquid nitrogen, um, it'll last forever. Look at the swallows. Look at that swallow. Now those are barn swallows. They're chewing on the flies, which got some flies on some of these bulls. I don't care what kind of swallow it is. I like swallows. Barn swallows, tree swallows, cliff swallows. Look at that. Ragweed haven. Absolute ragweed haven. They don't go after the goldenrod so much. Um, I've seen some of it clipped off, but th they definitely get that giant ragweed first. And there's some Queen Anne's lace in here. I 
I've seen them work on the Queen Anne's lace. There's some red clover down there. Monica, my sister, um, she's a master gardener. Um, she did that in Hawaii for many years. She worked on very, very wealthy people's uh, flower beds. And so she knows her flowers and, and blooms. And she was naming some in here yesterday. I didn't know what they were. She said, oh yeah, we grew that one in Hawaii. And I can't believe you got it in your cow pasture. <laughs> so, I've seen it, but I didn't know what it was. I just saw a bloom of it somewhere. I don't see any right here, but I've seen it. And she pointed it out the other day. It is, it's a really cool looking bloom. Of course, when you're talking about it, you can't find one. Here's Queen Anne's Lace. It's got a pretty bloom on it. It looks like lace for a queen. Yeah, bulls are doing good. Bulls are doing good. They're, they're kind of leaving the fescue alone. They're getting a little bit of it, but you know, th this is what they're going after right here. The Korean Lespedeza, it's tender. The giant ragweed. Little guy, you're in trouble. <laughs> You're gonna get eight today, I promise you that. <laughs> and of course the stick tight. I'm gonna walk up here and show you what they did to the ragweed yesterday, how they stripped it. Yeah, I had John and Monica help me this morning. We sorted those bowls out and they were out here in this pasture. And these, these two had never sorted cattle before. And Isaac and the boys, when you need us to come over and help you, I'm like, nah, we'll get it. And uh, so John, John, what was your comment this morning? We got them bowls up with that poly wire, a piece of fishing string <laughs> that wasn't hot. And you were saying, well, Greg, we didn't have the horses and cowboying up and whipping and <laughs> That's right. the dogs chasing them. <clears throat> What do you think about that? You watch the old western movies and it's the guy has got their cowboy hat, yee-haw, <laughs> bull whip, crap, <laughs> and they're running as fast as they can on their horses and the cows are, are running and I'm like, that don't sound quite right, does it? <laughs> yeah. Well, you saw it. we walked them bulls up to the corral. They got them a drink and we had two young ones with them. We didn't want them in there. Yeah. So we just raised the wire over their back. Yeah. Just kind of separated them out. It was. It was pretty easy and very relaxing, and uh, it was relaxing on us. It was relaxing on the bulls. So. Well, you all have never sorted cattle before with a wire like that. I think we've seen you do it a couple times. Yeah, but you'd never. I don't think. I mean, we we, we had like to go that. up and down these hills here. No, we hadn't done it like that. No. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, Isaac and them offered to come over. I'm like, nah, we got it. Well, they've never sorted. I said, Isaac, we got it. Um, but I, I was talking about that flower you talked about the other day, Monica. I forgot the name of it. You said you had it in your beds in, uh, in Hawaii. In Hawaii, yeah. What's it, it? It, it's actually a weed, but in Hawaii, sometimes people use it as an ornamental. It's Ruelia, and it's a, a lavender flower. And I don't know if there's a domesticated variety that they do, but... Ru, how do you spell it? R-U-E-L-L-A, -L -L I think. Ruella. Ruelia. It must have an I in there at the end anyway I a but, um anyway it's every place we traveled around the country I've seen it and it's like wow oh, that looks familiar <laughs> yeah you you're surprised to see it in our cattle pasture yeah well I was noticing as we were walking up from hooking up the fence the other day the variety of different forbs that you have and so I was checking them out Oh, that's that and that's that anyway yeah it's really cool to the, identify plant. the variety is <laughs> pretty awesome yeah yeah well, i think the cows appreciate the variety yeah. or the bulls yeah. folks i wanted to walk y'all up here and show you what they did to this giant ragweed yesterday they pretty much stripped it there's no leaves left on it now um i know i'm back in the wind again i apologize i mean look at this there's there's hard, there's nothing hardly left. There's one right there. This one got you know stripped pretty good. It's got a, a few little leaves there on the top. And uh, yeah, 
Look at the fertility we put down yesterday here. So we won't be back here now for another 60 days. And this is going to grow back really nice. Oh, here's that. Here's that. Uh, this is one we missed. My God, them bulls broke that off. Look at that. They broke off. They broke off that autumn olive. You see, you don't see that with cows so much. But bulls like to uh, rub and push and shove. and They kind of made life... Uh, miserable for that autumn olive. That's, uh, let's see, April, May, June, July, August. That's four and a half months growth right there. Yeah, came out with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's got ten little trees growing out of one stump. So that's why I'm pretty adamant about trying to get that stump painted. I don't want to be back out here doing this again. I hate doing things twice. So when I'm cutting and painting, I, I make darn sure I get these darn things. But, you know, there was a whole group of us out here. One person was cutting, one person was painting. And it's just easy to do. It's easy to overlook one. That's for darn sure. Yeah. Boy, somebody has got a loud truck. Got loud mufflers on it. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here, and uh, we're going to go get those bowls uh, drawed for our, our straws for anybody wanting to AI to some really good Judy South Pole bowls. Go to our website on the the uh, semen page. You can order it, and they'll deliver it in liquid nitrogen, and you leave it in that bottle until you get your semen tech there, the AI tech, I mean, and... Uh, you can breed to some pretty darn fine bulls for not a lot of money. Folks, we'll see you all down the road. Hit that subscribe button on the way out, and we'll see you next time.